Hello everyone, welcome back to economics class. So in the last session, we were able to finish the first part of the chapter. Remember, we are still in chapter 9. We were able to finish only the fiscal policy. Today, uh, I want us to complete this chapter, monetary policy. They are in one way or the other way related. So you please try to listen carefully and should be, you should be able to differentiate between the two. So what is monetary policy? It's actually the policy of a central bank of a country in influencing the money supply and credit in the economy. For one mark, you listen carefully. Okay, once again, it says the policy of the central bank of a country to influence the money supply and credit in the economy. So what is the main objective of monetary policy? Like the one we have explained in fiscal policy, it's almost same. Here also, it says the main objective or priority of adopting monetary policy is to regulate or influence the aggregate demand in the country in order to curb and control the abnormal situations like excess demand and deficient in demand. So in excess demand, we have inflation. In deficient demand, we have depression. So in both the situations, these are considered abnormalities and it affects the economy. So government is there to, to you know, identify the problem and make the correction. So monetary policy is one. And this monetary policy, it has two types, expansionary and contractionary. Expansionary is also called easy monetary policy and contractionary is also called tight monetary policy. I'll tell you why after some time. Now, there will be two measures of monetary policy, quantitative and qualitative. So while when the government adopts expansionary or contractionary monetary policy, they will use all the uh, measures at, at a time, at one time. So when the, police, when the government adopts expansionary monetary policy, they will use quantitative and qualitative. All the factors will come. Likewise, when they adopt this, the same thing will happen. Clear or not? And they are very, the points are same, explanation is opposite. If you know the first part, it becomes very easy for us to understand the other part. Okay, so why expansionary? Now, in times of depression, or let's say in times of recession, what happens? The demand becomes very less. And when the demand is less, income becomes less. And when income is less, unemployment will come in and it will have a far-reaching negative impact. Therefore, the government checks all this situation. And in times of recession or depression, the government will resort to, or the central bank will resort to, expansionary monetary policy. All right. And they will start adopting all these, thereby checking the uh, the abnormal situation. Now, why contractionary monetary policy? In times of inflation, where the aggregate demand is very high, in times of uh, inflation, there is excess demand. So for the rich people, no matter how much the price rise, it's never a problem for them. But for fixed income earning people, for middle income earning people, uh, we are mostly affected. And when we are affected, you know, it will have a far reaching negative impact. The government knows that. And therefore, in times of inflation, when, uh, you know, uh, there is excess demand, the government will resort to contractionary monetary policy. They will want to tighten the situation, tighten the demand. And all of this will be applied at a time. Clear or not? So I want us to discuss the measures uh, one after the other. But before that, why quantitative and why qualitative? Why it is called quantitative? You know, quantity, quantity means number or not. Quantity means number. So it is called quantitative measure because 
it aims at controlling the availability of cash with the public. Are you getting the point or not? It is called quantitative because the policy aims at controlling the availability of cash in the economy. It is called quality because the measure aims at deciding who should get and who should not get, meaning who should get the, uh, the credit and who should not get. So it is the government who decides here. We will explain everything uh, later. But before that, when I was explaining or when I was defining monetary policy, if you remember, I mentioned money supply or not. So what is money supply? Money supply is simply, uh, according to your textbook, I want to refer your textbook, it simply says the stock of money, the stock of money available with the public, stock of money available with the public that is called money supply. Now, this stock of money, when we go in detail, this stock of money will be divided into two. The stock of money equal to currency held by the public, meaning the, the money that we have with us as a public and the demand deposits with the commercial banks. Are you all able to follow or not? Over here, it says money supply, it equals to currency held by the public and number two, demand deposits with the commercial banks. Now, if you remember commercial banks chapter, I've explained all this in detail. So I'm not explaining again, but just to uh, help you remind uh, the meaning of money supply, it, uh, money supply will be equal to currency held by the public and the demand deposits with the commercial banks. So directly or indirectly, the government can manipulate this. How much money you have, government can directly or indirectly control. How much money you're depositing in the commercial banks, they can also you know, uh, control that. And how much the commercial banks can create interest or create credit in the economy, they can also control. The government can control this. So that's the reason the government adopts both quantitative and qualitative measures at a time in order to control uh, the excess demand or deficient demand in the economy. So uh, suppose in times of inflation, what happens? Uh, sorry, in times of depression or in times of recession, there is, uh, there is what happened? There is deficient demand. In times of recession or in times of depression, demand is less. And when demand is less, I've already explained, it'll, reach, it'll have a far reaching negative impact. And therefore, the government res resorts to expansionary monetary policy. So under this, we have, the first one is quantitative uh, measure. Under quantitative, we have repo rate or paying rate. We have open market operations. We have cash reserve ratio. The, I'm, I just wrote it in short form. You might want to refer your textbook, understood. So when the government follows expansionary monetary policy, the first step under quantitative will be repo rate or paying rate. Now, this repo rate and paying rate is almost same, the meaning is same, but paying rate, it is applied for long run period and emergency situation and repo rate is applied in short run period. Clear or not? Repo rate, this is applied in short run period. Paying rate, this is applied in long run period and in times of emergency. What then is paying rate? What then is repo rate? This is actually the interest rate which is charged by the central bank from the commercial banks when they borrow them money, when they lend them money. Clear or not? Suppose I am the central bank, you listeners are the commercial banks. When you borrow money from me, I will charge you interest rate. That interest rate is technically called repo rate or bank rate. Understood. So in times of expansionary monetary policy, the government will, sorry, the central bank. Sometimes I'll say central bank, sometimes I'll say government, it's same. Understood. So in times of expansionary monetary policy, the central bank will start 
reducing or decreasing the bank rate. When bank rate is reduced, are you all getting the point or not? When bank rate or repo rate is reduced, that means the commercial banks are getting the loan at a cheaper interest rate. And therefore, they will also want to create credit for the public or for the customers with a cheap interest rate. So when bank rate is reduced, the lending capacity of the commercial banks becomes large and attractive. Thereby, people will come forward and borrow money or take credit or loan from the commercial bank. So when this is undertaken, slowly and gradually, income of the people will rise and the demand will slowly and gradually rise. Getting the point or not, not only this, when repo rate or bank rate is reduced, even the investors, even the firms, even the industrialists, they are now willing to come forward and borrow money at a cheap interest rate. And when they borrow money at a cheap interest rate, they will invest more, creating more employment opportunities, you know, uh, uh, thereby multiplying income and then slowly and gradually economy will pick up itself. So in times of expansionary monetary policy, the first thing the central bank does is they will reduce the bank rate or repo rate. At present, according to your textbook, this bank rate is 6.25, if I'm not wrong. Yes, yeah, 6.25%. That's the present uh, bank rate mentioned in your textbook. It keeps changing. How much is it uh, in the market today? I'm not sure, but according to your textbook, it's 6.25, clear. So next one is open market operation. Open market operation is a situation when the central bank will enter the market and start selling or buying government securities and bonds. Clear or not? So in times of this situation, expansionary, the central bank will start buying the government securities and bonds from the commercial banks. It's very interesting or not. So the moment the central bank buys the, the uh, securities and bonds from the commercial banks, money will flow from the central bank to the commercial banks. The lending capacity of the commercial banks will be large. Getting the point or not? So since the government or the central bank have started buying government securities and uh, government bonds from the commercial banks, they are giving them in cash. The commercial bank receive it and create more credit. And therefore, slowly and gradually, money supply will rise or not. Third one is cash reserve ratio. What is cash reserve ratio? It's simple. All the commercial banks, they are supposed to keep certain cash reserve with the central bank. Are you getting the point or not? All the commercial banks that are in operation, by law, they have to keep certain percentage of uh, cash reserve with the central bank. That is called cash reserve ratio. Suppose at present, if the central bank is asking the commercial banks to keep 10% of their deposits as cash, 10% is large or not. And therefore, in times of expansionary monetary policy, suppose the central bank reduces this to just 5%. So 5% is, you know, a very good uh, and uh, minimal percent. And therefore, when the bank, when the CRR or cash reserve ratio percentage is reduced, the lending capacity of the commercial bank will be more or not. At, uh, in the first place, they were, they were keeping 10% as cash reserve. But now because of this expansionary policy, the central bank has reduced it to 5%. It increases the lending capacity of the commercial banks, thereby creating more credit in the economy. And when this is done, you know, slowly and gradually, supply of money increases and demand increases as well. Not only this, under CRR, we also have one acronym, SLR. It stands for statutory liquidity ratio. It's almost same. It's just that in statutory liquidity ratio, all the commercial banks, they have to keep certain percentage of these deposits in the form of cash with the bank themselves or itself. Getting the point or not, all the commercial banks, they have to keep certain cash percentage with themselves. That is called 
SLR, statutory liquidity ratio. So in times of expansionary monetary policy, this will be reduced. And when this is reduced, lending capacity of the uh, of the what commercial banks increases. So these are the three important quantitative measures, and then we have qualitative measures as well. What number one margin requirement to borrow money from commercial banks? Uh, an individual has to produce a security. Okay, security. Suppose the secu you are producing a security and it is worth 100. But the bank does not give you or the bank does not sanction loan amount amounting to this, uh, this loan security that you are producing. All right, there is this thing called margin requirement and this margin requirement is decided by the central bank. So suppose the margin requirement is 10%. How much is 10% of 100? It's just 10 or not. So the, even if you produce a security which is worth 100 by law, since 10% needs to be deducted, the bank will sanction only a loan amount up to 90. Then it's already deducted or not. This is called margin requirement. So in times of expansionary monetary policy, the central bank will try to reduce the central bank will try to reduce this so from 10 percent to let's say uh, only two percent if this is reduced to two percent then the bank can sanction a loan amounting to 98 rupees or not and when this is done you are getting large amount of loan from the bank against your security and therefore you will be able to create i mean you'll be able to create more uh, investment and thereby increasing uh, demand in the economy that is called margin requirement, clear or not? Then we have moral suasion. Moral suasion is a situation where the central bank will uh, try to persuade, will try to request, will also try to appeal and advise the commercial banks to create as much credit as possible because we are having, uh, the government is applying expansionary monetary policy. In times of depression, in times of recession, demand is low. And therefore, the central bank will ask, request, persuade, appeal, and advise the commercial banks to create as much credit as possible. That's it. And then we have rationing of credit. Rationing of credit simply means uh, uh, credit quotas. The government decides as to who should get, how much, and who should not get. Understood? That's called rationing of credit and by doing this the central bank uh, you know does uh, social justice at the same time uh, you know taking care of the uh, the depression in the economy so uh, like there are many business setups uh, there are many industries which are set up in the economy so the government will decide which uh, in which sector how much should get the government will decide in what sector how much they should get that is called rationing of credit and then lastly we have uh, direct action the central bank is the boss is the apex monetary institution in the country they decide what to do and what not to do so in times of expansionary monetary policy if the central bank feels that some commercial banks are not uh, applying or maybe not uh, trying to hit the advice and requests given by the central bank they can they can take direct action Direct action can come in so many forms. Maybe, you know, uh, uh, trying to close down their bank, uh, cancelling their license, or not allowing them to expand their bank, etc. All these are called direct action. Now, when the bank follows contractionary uh, monetary policy, everything that we have explained, it becomes opposite. It's just 20 minutes, so I am able to, you know, explain only the first part. But if you go through this, the other part, contractionary, it's just the opposite of what I have already explained. So that brings us to the end of the session. You keep in touch with your textbook. Stay safe. Thank you.